to talk about the brand new Madden NFL 17. Let's move on now to franchise. Madden players have been clamoring for changes and the dev team has been listening. It's great to hear from the team that this is the biggest upgrade to franchise mode in the past four years. You lie! You're a fucking liar! Shut up! Well, as you can tell, this video is about the connected franchise mode in Madden 17. They released these hype blogs about a month ago, and I finally got around to reading them, and I probably shouldn't have done it. You know, I saw tweets about a, a renewed focus on franchise mode for Madden 17, so I went in hoping the best. And as I read the blogs, a certain sense of dewy set in. I expected nothing, and I'm still let down. So in today's video, we'll go through the blogs that are linked in the description, and then I'll move on and show one football game that did franchise better than Madden's currently doing it, and another baseball game that makes Madden look like tic-tac-toe in comparison. So, on to the franchise blog part one, play the moments in game planning. All right, play the moments where you can experience franchise faster. This is great for simulation guys that want to, you know, play a little bit of the game but don't want to do it all. Big addition here. That's nothing I can criticize this. It's basically it's been in Mutt and 16. They're just moving it over to franchise mode to speed up the way you play the game. You can't complain about that. Um, scrolling way down, the types of moments. You can all read that. There's nothing of note there. You can do it on third downs or uh, get it in the red zone. All right, simulation speeds, different ways of simulating the game. Again, all on the same pattern. That's a big part. Super sim versus, and then um, a regular sim. We'll get on to game planning here. This is nice. Know your opponent's tendencies every week, then pick the right drills to attack and counter those tendencies in game. Amazing, good thing to have in the game. Strange enough, it's been in other games for years. Uh, seems pretty shallow, uh, in my opinion. Just basically, you know, call cover two defense. That's and then you'll get boosts for it during the game when you call it. Um, there, there really doesn't seem to be anything deeper than that. And we'll get into why I say it's not that deep when we get into the head coach section of uh, this video. Um, that Down below you get the in-game boost. It talks about, you know, when you call cover two. Uh, the tendencies. That's kind of cool that you can see the opponent's tendencies. That's really neat. That was something I think in Madden 05, I think they had uh, opponent's tendencies. So it's good to see that they bring them back 11 years later. Um, player focusing to give you more control on how your team develops. You'll select three players to focus on each week. My god, this is the company that put out Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Star Wars, The Old Republic. And this is the RPG elements they're coming up with for Madden. I mean, I, I feel like you can be a little bit more creative than just focusing on a couple players and giving them extra XP. Uh, you can also do gameplay strategies at the end here. There are three distinct strategies you can use when selecting game plans. One, you can try and counter your opponent, selecting game plan that takes away your opponent's strengths. You can do, you can go with what your team does well by choosing game plan that focuses how you like to play. And if your team is in rebuilding mode, you can lean on game plans that give XP to the position groups of most need. That's neat. That's that's a cool feature that you know you can take away things. I'm guessing it's going to be very shallow again. It's not going to be like Bill Belichick levels of game planning here, trying to take away an opponent's strengths. So we'll we'll see how uh, that is implemented. But I am not repeat not hopeful for it all right let's move on to blog part two big decisions and community now community is a great show but uh, we'll see if this is more like season four of community or one two three five all right big decisions i actually didn't watch six did you guys watch season six big it was on yahoo i think that streaming service is gone now big decisions come to you with the right information at the right time do you start your star quarterback with that lingering injury or do you go to the unproven backup with a playoff spot online? line my god these are the same things we've been deciding over for years right like is that a big marketing thing you want to push big decisions that you gotta start a guy or sit a guy okay uh big decision seasons goal the first big decision you'll make as a player coach of the regular season is to set a season goal as a coach you can decide whether you're going to make playoffs or shoot low with a 7-win season. The choice you make has an impact since if you miss a season goal, you have a chance of getting fired. My God, just start it over again. There, that's no consequence. Who's ever gotten fired in franchise mode? If you've gotten fired in franchise mode, close the browser uh, and go beat yourself with a rod. All right, big decision, injuries. you got to make a decision on injuries. Okay, they're, they're bragging about this twice. In the, the Two of the first three sections are about big decision injuries maybe well i guess it's introduction nope it's not the introduction it says big decisions injuries all right anyways um you'll see new presentation banners that highlight your injured players you even see with and without comparison banners showing how your team did the last few weeks with your backup qb qb compared to your regular starter 
Window dressing. Terrible. This is like dressing on a salad. It's still terrible. If you eat salad, close the window and go beat yourself with a rod. Salad is what food eats. Big decisions, acquisitions. You're, you're telling me that picking up a free agent and committing a long-term salary is, is a big decision? Of course it is. Why is this something you, you're, you're bragging about? I mean, been in the game for years. Whether you're going to tie your salary cap up. Why are you marketing this? Big decisions, re-signing. Of course re-signing Von Miller is a big decision. Big decisions, spending XP. I, obviously, it's a marketing term by this point. These are the same exact decisions we had to make in 16, 15, 14, etc. Oh, sorry, 14, 25. Uh, big decision, cutting players. No shit, Sherlock. Free agent bidding. Okay. While bidding for players in the offseason, you will now be able to easily see your depth chart at various positions to so you know who to bid on. They made it easier to look at free agents and compare, compare to your current team. Well, that's great. Greater user interface is always nice. All right, community requests. On top of everything else we've added this year, you see features in the game directly influenced by community wish lists, including, including the addition of score ticker, full player editing, practice squads, and more. Around the league score ticker. Uh, be immersed in Sunday football with the new Around the League score ticker. While playing your game, you will score. You will see score updates occur from games around the league. For example, if you're playing a 1 p.m. Sunday game, you'll see scores and stat lines for all the 1 p.m. games. They're talking about in-game and not like a scrolling ticker on the bottom on a Sunday. So it's kind of a neat feature that they're adding this ticker. Uh, full player editing, something that they used to have in the past that they're now putting right back in. Practice squad. Each team now has a 10-man practice squad that they can control week to week. It all starts in week four of the preseason. Instead of cutting players, you can now easily move eligible players to the practice squad where they develop as you train the various position groups during the weekly training. Okay, practice squads were put into place by Paul Brown in the 40s. This is the 28th version of Madden. You're, you're putting practice squads now. 2016, 75 years after they were put into the NFL. All right, congratulations. This is what we're bragging about. Dynamic development trait. So you're telling me somebody with a superstar trait is going to be in the league longer and develop better than guys with slow traits. Thanks, man. Regression feedback. As a coach or owner, you need to have a pulse on your team's development that you need to know exactly when your team regresses and how you will, and now you will in Madden's NFL 17. If you had somebody who could read uh, this might make more of an impact on your life. Anytime a player on your team regresses during the season or at the end of the season, you will be prompted with a detailed report so you can calculate your next move. Uh, they, they're just going to message you when a guy goes down in stats. Player card improvements. The player card has been bolstered with three key improvements. The first is a way to quickly see all the attributes for a specific player and how they rank in the league based on overall rating. The second is a view so you can see the progression history for the player. This lets you see where all the XP came from and when the ratings have been impacted, whether through progression or regression. Last but not least, the player card is now more accessible for more areas. All right, that is it. I want to go through it. I think Madden fundamentally misunderstands franchise mode, and I'm going to get into that in part two and three, as I think this video has kind of gone on long enough. Uh, we'll get in through NFL head coach 09 and potentially out of the park baseball in part two and three. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Call to action. I'll see you tomorrow. Franchise is the most popular mode in Madden. Why? Because everyone wants to feel what it's like to build a team from absolutely nothing and take them all the way to championship stand. But there's no doubt, Madden 17 is shaping up to be the most complete Madden ever.